Hi, I'm Brett. Today we've got another video update on the MY15 onwards range of Subaru Impreza WRX models. And behind me is our R&D vehicle, which was the first MY15 WRX delivered here in Australia. And it's done a fair bit of testing um, since. And what we're going to show you today is another update um, with how you can make the car handle better. And we always talk about lowering the car to make it look better and so-called in theory make them handle better but in actual fact lowering a car typically with springs doesn't always improve the handling although it does make the car look pretty cool. And at the moment we've got the car sitting at the moment on the hoist with the original factory springs and shocks separate to all the other modifications and we've just test fitted a new update of the uh, white line range of sway bars and I'm going to show you the difference and what you can expect to gain when you do change the sway bars on your car. Remembering sway bar links the left hand to the right hand side of the car to reduce body roll as you go around the corner. And um, these are the things that you may find that you want to improve from a sharper steering response, make the car sit flatter in corners, or may want to do more track days or something like that. So on the ground here, I'll show you, we've got the rear bar, which is the original factory fitted rubber bush joints. I'll get my camera in to come a little bit close. You can see this is what is bolted to the body and the sway bar pivots on that. And then this part here, is linked to the lower suspension. And you'll notice Subaru now provide these um, locking position rings on their sway bars which stop the bar moving sideways on the bush because depending on suspension travel, you can sometimes get a little bit of lateral movement in the sway bar. So if you come up here, you'll see White Line have actually done a similar job in their replacement sway bar achieves the same thing. It's got the locking mount here which bolts onto the sway bar when you fit the kit. Uh, new, brand new black polyurethane bushes to suit the thicker diameter sway bar because this is a different size hole in here now and it comes with new sway bar links that connect the sway bar to the lower control arm but also the other good thing is in the white line kit is you get this brace which stiffens up this bracket because without this brace and the stiffer sway bar this bracket here tends to deflect and bend under heavy load because you've got a stiffer sway bar so everything in here is under a much higher load so what you've got to remember is when the suspension goes up, the sway bar wants to follow the suspension travel, although on the left hand side the suspension may be going down. So the bar on the back is actually a, tor a torsion bar, which torsionally resists the sway of the car from an angle of the suspension from one side to the other, and res the resistance of that travel from the left to the right is what tends to flatten out the car when you're going around corners and if I get my cameraman to come around the front side here it's a little bit easier to see you can see at the moment the bar is mounted and connected to the hole at the very back but this hole here and I'll show you in a still photo in a minute and this one here at the front as the pivot moves further towards the center line of the bar itself it actually shortens the lever action and actually makes the sway bar stiffer so depending on how you um, connect the sway bar to those mounts will change the stiffness of the sway bar and if I get my camera around to come around the other side you'll see basically it's the same components from left to right so depending on which hole and they don't have to be the same on both sides you can just change one hole on this side and it slightly makes the bar a little bit stiffer and then you can match the other side and you can step it back further and further so even though this bar is bigger in diameter than the original factory bar the softest setting is almost the same as factory standard. So as you then go stiffer and stiffer, you can change the stiffness of the rear sway bar, which then changes the handling of the car. Now, the thing I want to touch on here is depending on your tyres from a grip level, the spring and the shock rates will obviously affect the sway bar settings on the back of the car, because not every car is the same. If you, with manufacturers these days, they're tending to go for stiffer spring and shock packages. So some of these cars are actually coming out with stiffer sway bars to suit those packages. So therefore an aftermarket sway bar, depending on your choice of springs and shocks and, and um, tires from a grip point of view, will vary. Um, and in an extreme situation, you may actually want to go for a really soft set sway bar instead of a really hard sway bar. But of course, in a situation where you've got the original springs and shocks, a sway bar on its own will give you good value for money from a handling point of view. So um, you can, Follow some more technical information on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. In our next video, we'll talk about the front sway bar. But for now, have a look at the link at the bottom of this video and we'll show you more about these parts with some still photos. But no matter where you are in the world, I'm Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.